All right. Well, it's time for the second part yeah. of the MU2. Um, it so may, may sound bizarre, but I was most impressed, I think, by the preamp. Uh -huh. Of course, it's a whole package. The deck is absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, we wrote in the review already that the headroom is, is incredible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of the MU2. But I, yeah. I personally don't know whether it's the deck or the preamp or both. Uh -huh. Yeah. But yeah, Martijn and I, uh, and I point to Martijn, but he's behind the camera. Uh, we're listening to the MU2, mm -hmm. and first we did it through our preamp, mm -hmm. and then we went directly into the power amp. Yeah, I remember that. And it was absolutely shocking, yeah. the difference. Yeah. It's like, it's not even a veal, it's like a complete curtain mm -hmm. open mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. front of us, and it was like, boom, directly yeah. into the music. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I know you did something special with the preamp yeah. because we had one of your engineers uh, in our uh, lab. Yeah. yeah. And he talked a little bit about it, mm -hmm. but then I wanted to know more. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. And that's why you are here. So that's it's, why uh, we're here. It's good yeah. to have you here, uh, Jaap yes. and uh, Martijn. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, actually, the story goes, goes uh, way back um, where. Uh, both Ilko and I have been inspired by uh, John van der Sluis from Audio yeah. Technique, for instance, but also by other people. Uh, and I, I would love to mention uh, Henk Ten Pierik. Yeah. He, um, he was an old uh, Philips uh, colleague from, uh, from uh, me when I started uh, at uh, Semiconductors somewhere in the 90s. Philips again. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, even Philips has been a great inspiration, not yes. only for me, but for others. So, uh, yeah. um, um, where um, most uh, have uh, pointed us in the direction of um, a phase modulation distortion. Yeah. yeah, I think you have to explain what it is. I will. Um, yeah. it's, it became, at least John van Sluis pointed uh, the, the reader of Audio and Technique at it by uh, focusing on the output filter of a CD player. Yeah. Ilko talked a bit about high frequency noise and um, um, just to be on the safe side, uh, apart from, from mostly second or fourth order analog filters uh, after the deck, yeah. um, there was an additional RC filter um, uh, yeah. at the output of, uh, of the CD player or a tuner or a tape deck. Um, but in case of a CD player, it was even worse. Mm. Um, the famous muting transistor <laughs> which actually cuts the output signal when you skipped or stopped or whatever did yeah. with your it prevents all sorts of clicks and yeah, clicks and pops. Yeah, tweeters go to heaven. <laughs> yeah. um, that that was a very technically very simple solution. It was yeah. a single transistor uh, controlled by a microcontroller, etc. And um, the uh, situation was that the collector of the transistor was connected to the output, oh. and when and the emitter was grounded, and when the transistor comes into conduction, the output signal is shorted, and of course there was a series resistor in front of that, and then it was silent. Yeah. So it worked like a charm. Um, when the transistor was not conducting, mm -hmm. um, you could think like it's out of the signal chain, because it's not conducting. Yeah. But uh, uh, practice is that there's still a junction capacitance between the collector and the emitter. So that's extra capacitance. It's extra capacitance, which could be uh, not harmful um, because there's always a small capacitor uh, uh, in parallel to that to, to filter any noise. But the uh, problem there is that the collector emitter junction capacitance is depending on the actual voltage. Oh. <laughs> yes. That's pretty bad. So we have a varying capacitance across yeah. the music <laughs> signal. And together with that series resistance, it forms an RC filter, a, lo a low-pass, uh, high-cut filter, um, where the cross-frequency or the filter frequency is being modulated because the capacitor is changing in capacity depending yeah. on the voltage. Ooh. And you could argue like, well, that's at 200 kilohertz or maybe 100, you don't hear that because it's outside the audible band. Hmm. Well, frequency-wise, that's correct, yeah. um, but uh, when you when you have a simple uh, uh, low-pass filter, the amplitude goes down, but also the phase changes. Those go one and yeah, one, exactly. hand yeah. in hand. Yeah. And you have a phase change at 200 kilohertz of, uh, well, at minus 3 dB, you have 45 degrees of phase change. 
and if you modulate that, uh, your phase change will be modulated with five or ten degrees. Yeah, yeah. And you could still argue, yeah, that's at two hundred kilohertz. But you yeah. also have a phase change in the audible band. Yeah. That's way smaller because yeah, it's less. that's away from the two hundred kilohertz. It's less. Yeah. It's in the order of maybe point one of a degree Is or that something. Bad? Is that bad? It's very audible. That's yeah, really? what we found out. Wow. And um, in the audio industry that has been um, uh, acknowledged and later you had the high-end CD players which had a relay at the output mm -hmm. rather than the collector emitter junction. And the relay-based uh, muting circuits were more transparent than the other ones. Well, uh, what we learned from that is that we should be very aware of uh, signal-dependent behavior of both active and passive yep. components. Yep. And um, functions in circuits, yeah, um, and that goes beyond bandwidth. It goes beyond distortion, uh, harmonic distortion, uh, and so on. It's signal-dependent uh, behavior of of circuits or components. That's really really hard to check. Um, well, once you you no dive into it, it <laughs> becomes simple. But that's that's with everything, I think. Yeah. But it takes it takes uh, a while before you you get it. It takes a while before you start to understand, like, what does it do with the sound yeah. uh, to, to identify it. Once you've identified that, it changes the way you look at a circuit or you look at a component. Yeah. And in, in the, 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 the basic question is like, okay, do we have a changing voltage or changing current across or through this component? Uh, how's, how's the voltage behavior around uh, uh, an amplifying circuit or a single transistor? And once you have you change your view yeah. or you expand your view, that's actually the case. Yeah. Um, it becomes easier to identify, and this it's this view that we have uh, uh, already for years and years and years on on uh, circuits and components. And um, since the MU2 has quite some true analog circuitry in it, yeah. Of course, we put all the knowledge and the experience in uh, in terms of uh, phase modulation distortion yeah. we put into the product because yippee, we could finally bring a product with all the knowledge in there. What does that phase shift do in terms of audible differences? Um, it, it's um, it's twofold in my ears. It's it's kind of puts a layer across the music which makes it less transparent mm -hmm. um, and it's 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 a slight layer uh, yeah so w if you're not aware it may not even be like mm -hmm. but once you take it off yeah it's like hey there's I something thought it happening would do something because people always think of phases time differences so imaging yeah that's um, well imaging um, maybe may, uh, I'm, I'm not so sure we, we, we well I actually we, we, you could make a demonstrator to demonstrate the effect but um, the other one is uh, pretty similar to, to what uh, jitter um, yeah. actually uh, causes in terms of, of audible and that's a slight kind of harshness mm -hmm. to the sound um, and um, again once you take that off uh, uh, and, and you start to listen to it again, yeah. then it's, it's very obvious what it does. <laughs> and um, reducing the phase modulation distortion brings us closer to the, to the natural and organic character of, of, yeah. of, 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 uh, of instruments. Even electronically composed music yeah. uh, imp imp improves uh, after. Well, it, it plays everything. It does. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't really matter, and mm -hmm. I think that's what a good hi-fi system should do. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't mm -hmm. really believe in systems for jazz or house or rock. It should play mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, uh, uh, I agree on that. Uh, yeah. 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 So uh, it does do mm -hmm. everything. Yeah. Um, but as of course, uh, that that's the preamp. We we tested it balanced and single-ended. Mm -hmm. Couldn't really hear a difference. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, I prefer balanced because mm -hmm. it's a little bit more uh, silent mm -hmm. in my ears. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then there's the headphone amp, yep. and I'm not an expert in that. I have to say that <laughs> already, yeah. but yeah. Uh, yeah. a lot of effort went into that as well. Yeah, well, and, and if you look at the circuit, it looks uh, pretty simple. Yeah. Um, it's an operational amplifier in uh, inverting mode. 
Yeah. And the inverting mode is uh, fundamentally the best mode of uh, applying uh, an op amp as an amp amplifier mm -hmm. uh, because you have no uh, input voltage modulation on the uh, differential inputs. Uh, I'll explain that later. Yeah, um, please. And uh, it's followed by a classical class AB uh, yep. transistor buffer. Um, and it's got a decent power supply, which, which goes, of course, beyond the traditional uh, 7, 8 or 7, 9, 115 <laughs> yeah, yeah. regulators, which are fine, but not good enough. Uh, too noisy. But, um, there's two tricks in the, uh, in the headphone amp. Um, uh, we've, we've displaced um, actually the zero crossing of both the current and the voltage by uh, giving a current and a voltage offset to the op amp output. Ah which uh, further reduces any possible uh, crossover distortion. distortion. Ah. Um, and that's a small trick, which is, uh, uh, this is not a commercial talk, but no. it, it costs uh, one resistor and one extra diode, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it, it works like a charm. Yeah. yeah. It sounded very powerful to me. Yes, it, it does. Uh, it has a lot of uh, oomph. Yeah. About the power supply, because a lot of high end Enthusiasts are not really fond of switch mode power supplies. Mm, nope. uh, I, I noticed that. Yeah, you know, when there is a switch mode power supply in the MU1 there and is, the MU2. There is, yeah. Um, I measured it, it's really quiet. Yeah. Uh, on the output, there's some switch noise, but none in the device itself. So you mm -hmm. can make a decent switch mode power yep. supply. Yep. Why did you choose for a switch mode power supply? Um, there's, there's a few reasons for it. Uh, very practical are um, uh, in terms of uh, logistics, yeah. because it's a full mains power supply. You don't yeah. need to stock uh, different units for different countries. Very good. Um, yeah. The other big advantage is uh, 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 thermal uh, reasons, um, because a yeah. well-designed power supply is cooler than uh, linear regulators. Definitely. Uh, specifically because we have to power a computer yeah. Which consumes considerably. Um, I measured so 40 watts, 40, yeah, 40, 40 something. Watts, 40 plus yeah. um, in total. Yeah. Um, so th those are very practical reasons. Yeah. And um, those weigh quite heavy on decisions. Yeah. And then um, once you've decided that, um, I think it's, it, and it's not easy, but it's, it's a, you have to execute what you have decided. And if you execute something well, yeah. Um, you end up with a good result. So it's, it's concept and implementation which, uh, which uh, have to go one hand in hand. You, you, can, you can be very enthusiastic about tubes, but if you, <laughs> if you apply them the wrong way, yeah, the result will be horrible. Yeah. So, and we are strongly convinced that we can design our own switch mode power supplies such that they perform uh, very well and they are able to perform at the very extreme level of the MU2. Yeah. Um, we've, we've got uh, a wonderful R&D team with uh, highly knowledge uh, engineers uh, and also uh, very experienced on, uh, on switch mode power supplies. Yeah. Um, and it's, it all comes down to getting the noise down. This is what you confirmed by measurements. Um, we did. Uh, we can we can uh, carry out all those noise measurements at the at the lab in Veldhoven. Yeah, Alvin, well, that's uh, why we're here all morning. <laughs> yeah, you saw <laughs> walking you saw around, uh, nerding um, out. But so um, yeah. and 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 all that knowledge uh, combined uh, uh, yields a, a very very uh, low noise uh, um, power supply. Yeah. And of course, that's the start of of, of generating energy for uh, yeah. for an audio device, and it's uh, it's further followed where. Uh, required by uh, discreetly designed uh, um, voltage regulators, yeah, no. either shunt or series regulators, depending on the local requirements. Yeah. We have uh, shunt regulators for each deck cell. Yeah. And well, yeah, you've, and seen, the and you've and seen the board, yeah, uh, yeah, different yeah. shunts for clocks. Yeah. So they're, they're actually they're cascading uh, power supplies, but it starts with, uh, with a yeah. switch mode yeah, power supply. Yeah, that's uh, Ilko's story about making the power supplies as clean as possible Where to not influence every element in the, yeah. in the device itself. Yeah, well, power supplies have, have a few um, um, aspects, actually, that they need to uh, um, meet requirements. One mm. is, is uh, 
is if you uh, you have to supply a constant voltage at a certain impedance and a certain bandwidth. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also like uh, how does it isolate the the load mm -hmm. uh, from the the main power supply yeah. rails. Yeah. And isolation is is a very important uh, uh, item. Um, so yeah, we we succeed in that because we're we're developing power supplies for for more than 40 years. So <laughs> Yeah, you know, you know what you're yep. doing. Yep. Uh, we had the digital part and the analog part now. Yeah, um, I, I may have a short word on uh, thermal distortion. Yeah, so um, um, specifically uh, in, in semiconductors, but also in yep. passive components, uh, and that, that's not new, and we didn't invent it ourselves, uh, but we, we apply it uh, very rigorously uh, in, in, in the design. Mm -hmm. um, but for instance, Audio Precision, the maker of uh, high-performance measurement equipment, yep, yep. they've published a paper on the distortion, thermal distortion of uh, SMB <laughs> resistors, and it's just measurable. So um, that's that's no secret. Mm -hmm. um, what happens if uh, in, in, if you uh, if you heat up a semiconductor like a transistor? It starts to heat. That takes a little bit of time. Yeah. And when you when you take away the dissipation, then it cools down, and that takes the equal amount of time. Yeah. And that's the thermal time constant. Yeah. That we, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Now um, the average transistor is somewhere between 100 microsecond and milliseconds time constant. And the good news is that's in the middle of the audio band. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, it means that depending on the musical material, depending yep. on the uh, music, uh, which changes by the moment, by definition, yeah. um, <laughs> you have uh, a transistor dissipating more or less uh, uh, yep. uh, energy and you have a change in the temperature oh, all shit. over. That's but there's a kind of delay in that because yep. of that thermal time constant. So that means that music material actually affects the temperature of uh, the same transistor a millisecond later. That's and bad news. Yes, and it's even worse. Okay. Because every parameter, except for the color, joking, yeah. every <laughs> parameter is depending on the temperature. If you look at semiconductor <laughs> physics, you see the T temperature yeah, yeah, in yeah, every yeah. equation. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah. So what we try in our designs is, is twofold. We either try to uh, reduce the amount of uh, temperature change yeah. in, in, a, in, a, in a transistor, or we try to even flat it completely. And the, let, the, 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 the latter is, is possible by uh, assuring that current f multiplied by voltage yeah. is constant. Yeah. And then power is constant, and then yep. you have no temperature changes. No temperature changes. changes yes. Yes. Yeah. And in that case, you can you can actually amplify because if you want to amplify, of course, you need a current or yep. voltage change. You, yep. you cannot get away with that, no. <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, uh, so no. um, that's that's what we do in uh, in the MU2 uh, to a constant. great extent uh, to keep it as constant or as small as possible. Yeah. And that's also uh, a kind of way of looking at uh, circuits in a different way, different from harmonic distortion or bandwidth or noise, but, but just looking at it in a different way. And that's what we do and we will continue doing with upcoming products. Uh, it's in, not in just drawing schematics, think this works and listening and we well, uh, finished. No, 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 it's drawing schematics, uh, but with, with uh, a multiple uh, view on, yeah. on what's going on in, in semiconductors yeah. specifically but also in passive components. Wow. Okay. It's uh, we try to make it not as technical. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't I'm not really think we really succeeded in that, but I hope still hope uh, you find it interesting. At least I think it's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah. Uh, it's been almost uh, a whole day. Yeah. So uh, time <laughs> flies when you're having fun. It is. Um, we tried to summarize it in an interview that's I think uh, 40 minutes or something. Mm -hmm. um, well, thanks again, and okay. uh, see you next time. Bye Thank bye. you, Jaap. Yes. Yeah.